So recently we had a client call and ask about a legal service that we completed about nine years ago and she wanted to, her trust documentation for her real estate. And once we look back nine years at the title of her property, we noticed that her property was actually in a life estate. And we had done a plan involving a life estate. And I thought this would be a good video topic. So what's the difference between a life estate and a trust? Well, folks, in order to understand both types of instruments, we'll call them instruments right now, let's understand what each one of them are. Now, I've talked about this in the past, in past videos, and I've included some links below, or if you're watching Facebook, some links above, for prior videos that are somewhat shorter and meant to be definitions. But let's move on to the topic. Now, with a life estate, we can think of this as a way to hold title, usually to real estate, and it involves some form of a deed, usually. Now, with a life estate, it's a concurrent tenancy, which means that title is held by more than one person, and usually the title is held for the duration of an individual's life. That's why they call it a life estate. Usually an individual that's involved with title. And the way that I typically see a life estate is I will have a parent come in and they want to plan for their real estate and they may have two children, so let's say a son and a daughter. And with a life estate, in general, what we could do is transfer all of the parents' right title and interest in the real estate to the children and reserve a life estate for the parents. This will mean that the parents would have a present interest in the real estate and they would have the ability to live on the property, do everything that an owner of real estate normally could do, pay bills, pay for insurance, pay for the real estate taxes, utilities, and upon their death by operational law, title to the real estate would be divided equally between their children because they named the children. And so their children are said to have a future interest in the real estate. Now folks, we're just talking in general terms here just to try to get these concepts separated so that you can understand the difference between the two of them. Now, what's a trust? A trust is a fiduciary relationship that's usually created in writing whereby the maker of the document, usually called the trustor, the grantor, the donor, assigns an asset to this entity to be managed by in most instances, somebody else. It could be actually the maker that, that manages the trust. And the name for the manager is called the trustee. Now, these assets are held for the benefit or on behalf of other individuals or an individual called a beneficiary or beneficiaries. Now, in general, you can have two, one of two types of trusts. One is very flexible trust and... In general, you can take assets and put them in and take them out. You can change the people that are involved with the trust or the terms, or you can revoke the trust. So therefore, it's called a revocable or revocable trust. The second type of a trust that you can have is a more structured trust, one that's more rigid, that the terms can't be changed, and once you generally put something in, you can't take it out. And this is called an ir irrevocable or irrevocable trust. Why was my client so confused when she called? Well, in general, they're both a way to hold title to real estate. So there's similarities between them. You can have more than one person on title. You can have more than one person involved with the trust. So these are ways to manage assets. So there's another similarity. Now, another similarity would be that both instruments in general or both ways of holding an asset avoid probate. They're both non-probate assets. So in general, no judge is necessary when an individual passes away or when the event occurs that triggers the transfer of title. Unless someone that has standing, someone that has an interest, challenges those instruments, in general, there's no court action necessary. Now, another similarity is that both of these ways of holding title can be formed within a will, within somebody's will. 
For instance, there can be a life estate created inside a person's will. The language would need to be there. And also, there can be a testamentary trust. And a testamentary trust in general is contained inside somebody's will. So now back to the question, what's the difference between a life estate and a trust? Well, folks, with a life estate, you can just kind of visualize that as being a piece of paper, a title to an asset, usually real estate. And it's usually recorded at the Registry of Deeds. And there's more than one person on title. And the life tenant, the person who has the ability, the present interest in the real estate, has the ability to use it. Now, when it comes to a trust, a trust is a fiduciary relationship. It's an agency. And the maker will assign an asset to a trustee. And that trustee will manage the asset for the benefit of the beneficiaries of the trust. Now the trusts can go range in the amount of language that's contained in it from a few pages to being a huge volume. And it can have all kinds of conditions attached to it. And a trust doesn't necessarily have to have real estate, it can, but it can have any other type of asset. It can be funded while the maker is alive or it can be funded when the maker passes away. And what I usually say is you can picture a trust like a series of fences that can be placed around any type of an asset, whether it's real estate or money, vaults or whatever. And you can make those fences really flimsy and movable. That would be our revocable trust or revocable trust, right? Or you can make them very permanent and structured with a gatekeeper. And so that's what you can picture as being a irrevocable or irrevocable trust. So that's the difference between the two. Now, if you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you subscribe in the lower right-hand corner and make sure you check out the links inside the description of the video. If you're watching me on Facebook, make sure you like the video and check out the, the description or the links that are usually above in the description. And if you're watching me on YouTube, some of my previous videos will be appearing here along with a list of related videos. So make sure you check those out as well. Dave Cerullo, CerulloLaw.com.